Hi, this is Coach Jeremy from Neumatica Coaching Services and today we're going to spend some time and talk about a story of John and the House of Mirrors. But before we start, can we please say a prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we are spending together with your children. Lord, we pray that you may bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So can you say this with me? Jesus loves me. Can you say it again? Jesus loves me. Can you say this again with me? Jesus cares about me. Can you say it again. Jesus cares about me. Say this. Jesus is proud of me. Say it again. Jesus is proud of me. And then finally, Jesus wants me. Jesus wants me. Amen. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. Jesus is proud of you. And Jesus wants you. And so we're going to look into the story of John and the house of mirrors. And I hope you enjoy yourself as we take time to read this story. So there was a boy who lived in the city of Tumbelesa, a young boy called John. John lived with his mother and his father, and he was six years old, this John. And he loved to play soccer, he loved to dance, he loved to help out in the house and do such kinds of things. But most importantly, John loved his father and his mother. And so one day in the city of Tumbekeleza, there was a fun fair. The clowns had come to the city. There were rides all around. There were so many interesting things to do. And so John's father decided to take John and himself to the fun fair so that they may have some fun some alone father-son time. And so they went into the fun fair and John went to various rides. He had some popcorn, he ate some cotton candy, he danced a bit, he rode some rides. And then finally John saw one huge ride. It was called the Big Dip. It was a roller coaster unlike any other. For the big dip looked like a big boat. And when you sat in the big dip, you were given some glasses that enabled you to see as if you were on a real river. And so the ride would begin. And John and his father would go up and down, to the side and to the left down and up again and round and it was just going woo, hey, hee, ha. So many sounds were being heard as people went across the big dip. And finally the big dip came to a standstill. People thought that the ride was over. But this was the final drop until the ride came to an end. And as you looked into the glasses, you could see as if you were on the edge of a waterfall. Din, 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 din. And the boat was slowly tipping. The boat was slowly moving towards the edge of the waterfall. And then finally it would drop. Ah! And everyone went down. Everyone was screaming. Hands were up in the air as they cried out. Ah! Some were crying, Mommy! Some were crying, Daddy! Everyone was crying and wailing and screaming. And John held to his father as he cried and screamed. Was like, ah! And then finally it came to a stop. And the ride was over. There was such a huge rush of emotions as people got off the ride. There was joy, there was laughter, some were crying. And his father asked him, how do you like the ride, John? 
I don't know, Dad. I can't. I don't know how to explain it, Dad. Said an excited John. It was amazing. It was fantastic. It was amazing, fantastic. What? What did you say, John? Yeah, it was amazing, fantastic. Wow, that's a new word. <laughs> wow, that's a new word. Said John's father, <laughs> wondering what amazing, fantastic meant. It's it's fantastic and amazing and estest together because that's how the ride was i really enjoyed it and i can't wait for mom to come with us next time so that we can go on the ride together and so yeah so it's still some time to spare john's father asked him you know what would you like to do We've had all the rides, we've eaten the popcorn, we've had the cotton candy, we've rolled on the big dip. What would you like to do? John said, I don't know, Dad. Let me see around. So as John was looking around, he looked and saw a house of mirrors. And he thought, huh, mirrors, that looks interesting. Because John loved to look at himself in the mirror in the morning. He would always see whether he's dressed well, whether his hair was combed, whether he's Ty was on straight, especially when he was preparing for school. He always loved to look at himself in the mirror to see if everything was okay. So he thought, hey, a house of mirrors, that looks interesting. So as they went into the house of mirrors, his father was at the ticket store buying the tickets for them to get in. John slipped into the house because he was so excited and he thought, hey, I can have a head start before dad gets in so I can see how the mirrors look. So when he got in, he saw a hall full of many mirrors. Mirrors were all around him, to his right, to his left, up, down, mirrors were everywhere. In front of him were mirrors. Behind him were some mirrors. And as he looked into one of the mirrors, he was completely shocked. He looked at himself and he had a big head and a very small body. And he wondered, okay, what's happening? Why do I have such a big head? And then he looked into another mirror and he looked all weird. He was all bendy. His head was bended towards one side. His head and his hands were on another side. His legs were on the other side. He looked bendy and stretchy and he wondered to himself, how do I look? And as he looked into another mirror yet again, he had a big belly like Santa Claus and a very small head and very tiny feet. And he was really getting scared. He was getting freaked out because he was wondering, how am I looking? Is this how I really look? Maybe the big dip did this to me. That as we were going up and down and side to side, I started looking a bit weird and he was getting scared. So he closed his eyes. He didn't want to look into the mirrors anymore. He was scared and his hand was in his face. And he was crazy. He was covering himself. He didn't want to look in the mirrors anymore. And he heard the footsteps of his father as his father came close. And he said, Dad, am I really that weird? Dad, am I really this weird? Look and see. Look at the mirror and see, Lord. Look how I look. I look very weird, said John with his hands, in his face, in his hands. I look very weird, Dad, said John. But his dad told him, no son, you don't look weird at all. Come on, open your eyes. I want to show you something. No, dad. I'll look at myself in the mirror and I'll see how weird I am. But his father told him, no, come on. I want you to see something. Can you see? Look, so confidently with the father's hand wrapped around John. John peeked and saw the mirror. You see, Dad, we are weird. The big dip did this to us. You see, look at how you look. You look all weird and stretched out and all weird. But his father told him, 
But look at me, John. Look at my face. Is that how I look? No, that's not how you look. And John was now getting a bit confused because he was looking at the mirror and he was looking at his father and they were not looking the same. And so his father bent down and close to John as they looked at each other face to face and eye to eye. His father told him, you see, John, these mirrors are lying. What they are doing is that they are exaggerating. They are telling big lies about how you look. They see your face and then they tell big lies about your face. Like they see your stomach and then they tell big lies about your stomach. So don't believe their lies. They are telling you lies. But there is always a good mirror and I will show you. Because at the end of the hallway, there was one mirror that was correct. And when you looked into the mirror, you saw yourself the way you were. So his father led him to that mirror and showed him. You see, this one shows you how exactly you look. But the other ones are lying to you. And if you look hard into them and if you keep on concentrating on them, you will start believing their lies. So what does this mean, Dad? asked John. Well, I would like to tell you this. You see, in life, there are many people who will tell you many things. Some, pe some people will tell you, oh, you are like this or you are like that. And some people will make big lies about you. They will tell you that you are stupid. They will tell you that you are crazy. They will tell you that you don't know anything. They will tell you so many bad and crooked things. And some people will also lie to you and tell you that you are the best that there is. When it's sometimes it's not so true. They will exaggerate. They will tell big lies. But you see, there is someone who will always tell us the truth. God will always tell you the truth. And that's why he gave us his Bible. So that when we read his Bible, we can always see the truth about what God is telling us. We can always see the truth about ourselves. The Word of God, which is His Bible, will always tell you the truth about yourself. It will always tell you how God loves you. It will always tell you how God wants you. It will always tell you how God has good plans for you. And that's why it's important for you to always read the Bible. And when people tell you things, when mommy and daddy tell you that they love you, you can see it's true. Because even God loves you. When people tell you that they hate you, you can say, ah, it's okay. I know God loves me. I know mommy and daddy love me. It can also tell you how you can help people. How God loves you and how you can also help other people. The Bible will always tell you the truth. It will always tell you what God is thinking about you. Really? Asked John. You mean God thinks about me? But I'm so small. I'm such a little kid. Doesn't God think about so many other things? There are bigger things I think God has to think about. God can't really be thinking about me. But his father told him, no, God's mind is so big. It's such a big mind that he can think about you and every other person in the world. God's mind is bigger than a supercomputer. God can think about you and is right now thinking about you. And John was like, wow, God thinks about me. That sounds amazing. So you mean that when I read my Bible, I'll be able to see what God is thinking about me? 
Yes, John, when you read your Bible, you will see what God is thinking about you and how He cares for you. That sounds amazing. In fact, that sounds amazing fantastic. That's so great. That God thinks about me. That God loves me. The creator of the universe, the God who is in heaven, he loves me and he thinks about me. That's amazing. But I'm feeling hungry, Dad. Can we go home? Mom told me that she was going to make some chapati and cocoa. Ah, how I long for some chapati and cocoa. Yeah, son, we can go home. But what have you learned from this? Well, like you say, Dad, God is thinking about me. And I think for me that's the biggest thing. That God thinks about me. And when I read the Bible, I can see what God is thinking about me, St. John. Yes, yeah, son, said the father. Let's go home. John got home. He told his mother everything they had done that day. And as he went to bed, he looked at his Bible. And he saw that there was a book called John. And he saw, hey, maybe... This is a good place to start, to see what God thinks about me. And so John began to read his Bible, and he started to see everything that God thought about him. And so I, would, I want you to remember that God is thinking about you. And whenever you read your Bible, you will see that God loves you, God cares about you, and God wants to be with you. So God, we thank you for this time we were able to share this story. May you be with us. May you keep us. May you show us your love, your kindness, and your, and your compassion. In Jesus' name we pray and believe.